In 1924, Peter Cortell, founder of the Dayton Rescue Mission and representative of the IUGM, visited Cincinnati. He was surprised to discover that there was no gospel mission in a city of half a million people. He called upon a number of Christian leaders in the city, including James N. Gamble of Procter & Gamble, who would serve as the board's first president. Gamble financed a building, and on August 4th of 1924, City Gospel Mission opened the doors for its first service with 29 people in attendance. The mission would hold services every night of the year and would serve the poor throughout the city, including hundreds of children. Superintendents would step in and out, giving years of service to the community. But in 1942, the board struggled to find a good fit after several false starts. That same year, a Miss Marguerite Kahn was hired for office work, and it was quickly realized that nobody could run the mission like her. The board voted to make her the next executive director, and for a woman, that was very unheard of at the time. In 1943, City Gospel Mission acquired a Presbyterian church on Elm Street. In those days, the mission predominantly served middle-aged drunks, men who were generally skilled but couldn't hold down their jobs because of the bottle. Marguerite kept the chapel doors open 24-7 for the public. The men would make repairs to the church, sleep in the pews, and get up early to find work. The mission continued to serve children as well. They held summer camps and a Sunday Bible school that grew to 400 children in attendance. In 1944, Marguerite started the Women's Auxiliary of City Gospel Mission. They became an important group of women, influential and well-connected. They would help the mission to scale over the coming decades. After World War II, America began to change dramatically. Missions around the nation were now running drug and alcohol recovery programs, and Marguerite worked hard to raise funds for a new building that could house transient men. The building was completed in 1971, but unfortunately, Marguerite began experiencing health issues that same year. After 30 years of service, Marguerite would retire. The 70s and 80s would be a challenging time for the mission. The neighborhood around the campus declined and became dangerous. Internally, the mission would also decline. In 1992, the board would hire Ed Perrine, who had experience working at missions in LA and Chicago. Ed worked hard to help the mission rise out of the mire. God would bring restoration to the mission under Ed's care. Through the 90s, Ed would raise funding that took the organization to over a million dollars. In 97, Ed would meet Lacrita Bowman. Lacrita found that having the courage to change, a ministry serving women coming out of prison and into recovery. They realized that they shared the same vision and in 98, Lacrita merged having the courage to change with City Gospel Mission. Unfortunately, the children's ministry, along with the women's auxiliary, had all but vanished under the directors of the 70s and 80s. But through the 90s, Ed became familiar with a youth organization named City Cure, led by Roger Howell. In 2001, City Gospel Mission and City Cure would merge under the umbrella name of City Ministries. The organization could now serve men, women, and children throughout Cincinnati collectively. Prayerfully, it was decided that Roger would serve as the executive director and Ed would support Roger until his retirement in 2006. With the expansion of ministry and mergers over the years, the organization's branding became confusing. So in 2009, the board voted to rebrand all of the ministries under one name, City Gospel Mission, and the mission became very clear to break the cycle of poverty and despair one life at a time. During the rebranding, the revitalization of downtown Cincinnati was underway. The mission had outgrown its home on Elm Street and the pressure was on to find a new location. 3CDC was the organization responsible for the city's transformation. They partnered with City Gospel Mission to develop a capital campaign that raised $15 million for the relocation. They found a spot on Dalton Avenue, formerly known as Crosley Field, the historic Red Stadium. After five years of fighting lawsuits and zoning permits, they didn't just win the case, they won the heart of the city. State and local dignitaries, along with members of the entire community, showed up for the ribbon-cutting ceremony. The facilities that were built were world-class. During the move to Dalton Avenue, Jobs Plus and Hope House Ministries would merge with City Gospel Mission. In 2022, after three decades of ministry, Roger Howe would retire. In 2023, Dr. Jonathan Brown would step in and become the mission's first African-American president, ushering in a new era for City Gospel Mission. 
The organization has never been more equipped to meet the needs of the poor with the love of Jesus. And through the next century, we will continue to break the cycle of poverty and despair one life at a time. Hello, I want to thank you for tuning in and welcome to the 2024 Online Youth Banquet. All year long, we are celebrating 100 years of hope and service to Greater Cincinnati. This online event is special just for you, our faithful youth supporters, volunteers, and friends. Thousands of kids will receive love, hope, and support from a caring adult because of your generosity. City Gospel Mission's youth programming covers the whole spectrum, from preschoolers to elementary students and middle schoolers on up through teenagers. We have amazing church and school partners across six counties. We serve in 17 school districts, and our programs take place at over 53 ministry sites. When I say the whole spectrum, I mean cradle to career. Starting with Little Village, which works with single moms and parents who have the littlest of God's children. Through We As Kids and Princess Ballet, which you'll hear more about later, they combine to make up over half of our 53 sites. All the way up to career, our Jeremiah Scholars program provides scholarships and mentoring for students who come through and want to pursue education beyond high school. Stay to the end to hear more about why we do this and how you can help us Break the cycle of poverty and despair, one life at a time. When kids grow up in stress-filled environments, it negatively impacts their imagination and learning. There are so many youth at risk of experiencing lifelong poverty and despair. That's where God has called City Gospel Mission to step up and step in. City Gospel Mission's cradle to career focus is designed to break that cycle. Listen to this. 98% of the students from our youth programs not only graduate high school, but they do so while avoiding ju the juvenile justice system and teen pregnancy. 95% of those students from our programs that graduate go on to secondary education, join the military, or are successfully employed straight out of high school. Now that's an incredible success rate, and we give God the glory. Let's hear about another success. Tonight I want to share a story with you that truly showcases breaking the cycle of poverty and despair one life and one family at a time. And it does so in such a beautiful and heartwarming way. I really think you're going to appreciate this. Miss Linda's cookies are sacred, sacred. Like, you could, you could put a hundred grandma's desserts in front of my face, and I'm picking Miss Linda's cookies every time. She used to be our snack person at WizKids, and she would bring the snacks for all the other kids. Of course, I always got what I wanted because she was my tutor. WizKids was something very life-changing to be a part of. I met James in the second grade. He came to about here, and now he puts his chin on top of my head. He's so tall. So it's like, wow, a lot has happened. She's played a way bigger role than just a mentor for James. The way I grew up, there's so many different ways that things could turn out and so many different ways that James could have turned out. When Linda started outside of WizKids saying, hey, I want to go out of my way to spend time with you, that was important. That first summer is when I took him out as a mentor and his brother and sister came running out and wanted to know if he had a good time. And he said, yes, we're gonna do it every week. I had not planned on doing it every week, but he said we were going to, so of course we did. So then I took the other ones and we would go to Miami Whitewater, would sit at a picnic table and play cards. We went hiking a lot. And I was trying to show them that you don't need to have a lot of money to have a good time. Relationships were so much more important. It was just about how much time and quality time 
that she could spend with us, not just sit there and have us walk through the museum and she plays on her phone while we do it. She's pointing out stuff and she would make me read every little exhibit plaque as practice. So when we go back the next week for WizKids, I flip through that book like it's nothing. Maybe a year and a half later, I said, hey James, do you want to go to Christmas Eve service at the vineyard? And he said, oh, I would like to. And I said, well, do you think your parents want to come with you? And he said, I don't think so. My, my dad is not into church and neither is my mom. And I said, well, just ask him anyway. And afterwards, we'll go out to eat afterwards. So they went and Nick loved it. They would meet us there for years. Sherry and I have been together since we were 16, 17 years old. So we've been together for going on 27 years. At that time in our life, I'm not saying that we would have gotten divorced, but the marriage wasn't good. Church changed everything. Church changed our relationship. Church changed me. Watching my mom and dad stand side by side, watching, raising their hands to the Lord is something, something special when you get to look back and see that it all started because somebody decided I didn't know how to read. Years later, James approached me and said, I think I'd like to get baptized. And I said, well, that's great. He says, you'll do it though, you'll do it, right? I don't want anybody else to do it. I said, sure, I'll do it. He was this little second grader, and look how much he has grown coming out of the water. And God let me see that. Two years later, Nick asked me if I would baptize him. I'm glad we were in water up to our waist or whatever, so people didn't see the tears that I was crying. Just as much as our kids needed her, I think I needed that stability too. If we were to talk about my history with my mom, we'd be here for a long time. There was disappointment there, broken promises. That's a whole other story. I had someone other than my wife that I could count on. You find out later on that Miss Linda had some things going on in her life. We needed her just as much as she needed us. I don't think I could put it in words. Because it was a long time before that that I saw my own grandkids. I think the very first year, James always introduced me as my adopted grandma. Here was this little kid, just put a total trust. He accepted me, just who I was. I don't, you know, maybe it's because I bought Wendy's um, Frosties that day. <laughs> At that age, I didn't have the greatest relationship with my grandparents, and Miss Linda stepping right up to the plate without hesitation was perfect timing. She's been just like such a rock. Jesus absolutely had a plan. We organically came together over reading. Obviously, City Gospel was what created the environment to bring us together. Everybody's always talking about chance, like everything happens with chance, but then if you sit back and actually look at the details that played into place, the Lord would have never put in that heart of the administrators that I needed help reading, would have never met Miss Linda. Him acting on me at a very young age, now looking back at it and seeing that it was the Lord acting on me, it makes me want to pursue him that much more. It makes me want to put that much more faith in him because I've seen what he can do with the beautiful little lady that stands next to me every time I come over here. We have so many stories of catastrophe, pain, and brokenness. But when I get to hear a story where that part of the journey was eliminated because a Christ-centered mentor stepped in, I just say, wow, praise God. That's why our youth programming exists. That's why we, which includes you, that are watching, do what we do. When we pass students with a mentor, it goes beyond reading skills. Educators explain that from birth through third grade, children learn to read. But from fourth grade on, they read to learn for the rest of their lives. 
One of the many things that make this program unique is that it pairs the same Christ-caring adult with the same child each week. In most cases, We As Kids closes the reading gap that students were experiencing when they first entered the program. And in a lot of cases, they go on to exceed well above the class average. As we've studied the impact of We As Kids, we've seen significant improvements in grades. We've seen the student school attendance and self-esteem go up, and we've seen their behavior issues go down. Lives are turned around. Let me take a minute and turn things over to Gordon Havens, director of Princesses Ballet, for a behind-the-scenes conversation with some of the princesses. I think you're going to really enjoy this. Have you had a lot of good experiences at Princesses? Yes. Yeah, name a couple real quick, just, be, just to get warmed up here. The performances. The oh performances. my goodness, yes. How many performances do you think you've done, Taylor? I don't know. How long have you been on our team? How long have you been Eight years now. Eight years? That's a lot of performances yeah. <laughs> all around. How long have you been on it? Uh, I've been doing ballet for 11 years now. Yay, I'm so glad. How long have yeah. you been on the team, girl? Two years. Two years? It's a, yeah. Two years, yeah. In September, Wow, Lake look Ray. how far she's come in two years. Yeah, it's a no, dance, it's insane. So. Do you really love it on a scale of one to 10? A billion. <laughs> one thousand. <laughs> one thousand. What about you? One million. Oh, come on, guys. <laughs> one to 10. What about you, dear? A billion. I love it oh, so much. Oh, my goodness. Much. That's crazy. All right, 10. 10. Yeah, you give us stuff. How about me? What, what, what do you like about me? What don't you like about me? Uh, what I like about <laughs> you? What I like about you is that you're a supportive coach, and mm. you're a That's mentor, awesome. a leader, mm. and a role model to me, mm -hmm. and you're father, uh, father like to me. What'd you say? Father like to me. Oh my! <laughs> my goodness! Whoa! You Hold make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> you make me cry. So I love it. That's so sweet. Well, thank you. Um, how about you guys? I like your strictness, ultimately. That's, like, that's I know amazing. it's like hard to say because like sometimes it does get on my nerves a little bit. <laughs> but I do like your strictness overall because yeah. it what? disciplines me like in volleyball and even like in school and like other places that I go. Has like, this helped you in school? Me. Yeah. How? Like I've been in, like an honor student for the past, I think, three years now. Yeah. So you can it keeps see me, the like, things it carries over, doesn't it? Yeah, it keeps me like focused and stuff in school and even in like the other stuff that I do. Well, all three of you are A plus students in my uh, <laughs> in my studio, our school of ballet, and you guys are phenomenal. Love your dancing, and I could literally sit here and watch you all day. <laughs> You've gotten that good that it's like pleasure, 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 pleasure. You've got great technique going. I love your 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 expressions. Each one of you are really powerful in your expressions. I could go on and on. Um, anything you don't like. Uh, <laughs> sometimes when we're at a bar and you be like, yes, oh, yes. it gets me out of nowhere and yes. I don't know what it's for. <laughs> That's great. That's right. That yeah. actually is true. Like some of the things you say at bar, it'd oh, be yeah. so out of the random. <laughs> like she would just randomly My say. comedy is not always hitting it either. No, no. <laughs> I know. You just Sometimes. look at me. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Oh, my yeah. right? I know. I got to relax more. You know, yeah. but yeah, I'm very proud of you. So. Talk about Toymaker's Daughter. Ah, Toymaker's Daughter. <laughs> yeah, this is so cool. Toymaker's Daughter is an original ballet, which I give to God be the glory for everything I'm going to say. Toymaker's Daughter is, our subtitle is, An Allegory of the Gospel. And it literally is from Genesis through the Gospels. It's a death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it's in a totally different form. For example, the uh, toy shop is like the Garden of Eden. And then we have a den of villains and then we have a wonderful outcome of course because in the end god wins amen to that and uh we have three of the kind of really major characters here we'll start with the mean one right here and <laughs> she's also she's also going to be uh doing two parts uh good and bad a toy as well as we have the queen villain do an expression there. <laughs> oh boy, she is amazing. <laughs> and then we have one that's either going to be either the toy maker. I'm kind of like between her and another one. Wonderful girls who are both like really great dancers. Toy maker. Or also she does a phenomenal job as 
the ringmaster. So she's going to be really good on that. You guys excited about this, by the way? Yes. Yeah. 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 So good. This is our debut, and we hope to, Lord willing, do this for decades and decades and decades. This will continue on and on. So you know the world has their nutcracker. We have our Toymaker's Daughter. All right, well, listen, Taylor, Kamaria, Avery, uh, it's been wonderful talking with you and all, and so awesome, awesome, awesome. Good evening. Thank you all for being here. My name is Jonathan Brown. I'm the president of City Gospel Mission. Tonight, you've heard some powerful facts and testimonies. You know, there are tens of thousands of youth right here in greater Cincinnati that desperately need our help. They need the hope and future that can only be found through the gospel of Jesus Christ found in Jesus Christ. And they need all of us here tonight, each one of us, to step up and to help them so that they can navigate their journey to adulthood in life-altering ways. They need your prayers. They need your support. They need your love. And tonight, they also need us to give generously toward their future. $200 provides programming for a year for every child and student we work with advocating on behalf of these young people. I want to challenge you tonight to stretch yourself just as Linda did with James, just as we all do with the ones that we love. So tonight we have rippling effects, ways that we can impact young people that you won't even imagine. And so I want to just let you know how much I appreciate you, appreciate your dedication, appreciate your commitment, appreciate your love for City Gospel Mission and the young people that we serve. Without you, we would be unable to do the work that we currently do. So on behalf of all the children, on behalf of all the volunteers, I wanna say thank you. Thank you for your effort, Thank you for your care. Thank you for your kindness. And thank you for your gift that you will be providing tonight. If you don't mind, can we close out in prayer? Dear Lord and Savior, we thank you for each person who's here tonight. We thank you for allowing them to arrive safely. We thank you, Lord, for their ongoing support of City Gospel Mission and our youth ministry. We thank you, Lord, for the gift that they will be giving tonight. But we also thank you for the ongoing support that they provided down through these years. Lord, bless them. Keep them. Keep us all. Bless our children. Open up doors that no man can open. And then we ask that you close the doors uh, that no man can close. Help us to pour into our young people and so that their tomorrow will be better than their right now. Use us, Lord, for your service. We'll be so sure to give you all the praise and the glory. Thank you all for coming. In Jesus' name we say, amen.